Hello, Hidden Gems. Happy, what is the day? I don't even know. Is it Thursday? Thursday. Thursday. Happy Thursday. And <laughs> midday, we usually don't do midday lives, so we have a very special guest with us here, the Larry Woodcock, or, or as you know, um, also I called him Idaho's Papa. Papa. Yeah. I said, I, I called him Idaho's Papa in uh, during the trial of, <laughs> of uh, Lori Vallow when you're there. We saw each other every day. So, so really quickly for those new to this channel and for those that haven't seen the latest crime nation episode called fatal devotion about the Lori Vallow case, uh, Lori Vallow, Chad Daybell case. Here is Larry Woodcock. He is the grandfather, the papa of JJ Vallow, a victim in this case. And, and also I can say our very dear friend, John and I were also a big part of the episode and uh, we all of us filmed in, in the Las Vegas area. While they didn't film us together, we were all there at the same time. We all watched this episode. And we wanted to, first off, just so you know, we haven't talked to Larry yet about this episode. This is no. as raw This is as raw as you're going to get. I, Larry came on. I said, let's just go. Let's just talk among friends. So we want to ask Larry about the episode. We want to talk about our feelings about it and, and watching it. It it premiered two nights ago. It was available for streaming for the first time yesterday. And then we want to take you behind the scenes, how, how it all uh, happened. We all filmed in the same place, so just not together. Yeah. But um, first off, Larry, um, you watch it. Did you watch it when it premiered, the Crime Nation episode, or did you watch it a day later? Or uh, tell us about that. No, we invited some of our just amazing friends here. They they wanted to see it also, and we invited them to come into our home and watch it with us. And so we saw it as everybody else saw it. That was probably pretty um, overwhelming and, and emotional. How how did you do watching that? You know, I can only imagine. While it's been four years, it's still so fresh. I'm sure every time. You watch something like that. It's real life for you. True crime is true when it comes to, to this you know, story for you. The, the amazing thing, it's, I, I, I think the way that I can put it is it's a never ending movie. And I, I, I we watched the first part. I had no issue. Uh, I got vocal a couple of times, but I can't help that. <laughs> and, uh, but I will say th that the part of that, when it came, <clears throat> when it came to JJ towards the latter part, I watched just a short bit of it and then I had to leave and I, I hope people understand it's been over four years and it's still very emotional for me it's very emotional and I keep thinking and I keep praying that I can I can get past this somewhat and I can do that in a lot of circumstances. But when you put the faces together, it, it's hard to, because there's for what reason, you know, John, Dr. John, you and I have spoke about this and it, if I could only, if I could only get past that part, I, I, I think that it, it would be a, um, just such a, a relief to me. But I, I just can't get past that that part of the interviews, all of the interviews, when I start speaking about the love and and the, the, the relationship that I had with JJ and, and, I, and I can't yet, I don't, I don't understand it. And I, I hope one day that, uh, 
that John, you can say a magic word and put some magic powder dust on it. And, and, and I can, but it, it hurt. And so I had to leave for part at that part. I went in the bedroom and, and just had to get away from it for a, a few minutes. And then I came back in at the very end, but, uh, I mean, I'm not going to, it is what it is. Yeah. I, thanks for sharing that, Larry. I, every time you talk about it, I feel such empathy for you and try to understand how difficult it is, but I, you know, I'm not in your position, so I, I can't know, but I can, I can imagine how difficult it is for it, sure. It's, it's hard. It's hard, hard. And it, I keep expecting time to make it not as hard, John. Yeah. But it, it's, it, it hadn't got to that point. And, you know, my heart goes out to families especially in the news in the last, it seems like the last few months of so many families losing children. And, and it, it just, it hurts my heart. It really does. It, it hurts me because I, I, I try to make everybody, I try to solve the problems. That's what I've done all my life. Yeah. And, and, it, it's, it, I just wish that, it, that there was a circle of hugs in the United States for everybody, whether it's the four children lost in, in northern Idaho and the children that have been murdered recently. Uh, you know, it just, just make it feel better. Yeah. Well, Larry, I, I want you to know that I'm open to talk about it anytime you want. And I think the there's no solution here in my mind, but maybe it would help if we just keep talking about it and maybe trying to keep making sense of it. I think part of the problem is, as you just said, the part of the problem is the, how senseless the entire situation was, right? And I think that makes it harder to really grasp because it was so pointless. It, 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 it could have been avoided, should have been avoided. I think that makes it very difficult to understand. It does, John. And, you know, it, it was senseless. It was senseless. We'll just, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Right. And I'm sure you, there's still some anger there, I'm sure. You have no idea <laughs> the anger. But I, I can honestly say, John, that that's one of the things that I have come to terms and to grips with is to a certain extent. I, I have to admit, John, I'm not quite as, as angry at the, those two and the circle. And y'all certainly know what I mean by that. Yeah. But it, it, I do not forgive them. I will never forgive that circle of friends uh, or users or whatever they are. I will never forgive them for that. And, uh, but, you know, I'll be 77 next month and, and I'm, I'm trying so hard to not be angry, John. I've really been working on that, but sometimes when I see those, that documentary the other night, man, it's hard. It's hard. It's very hard. 
What what struck you the most about the documentary? Did anything stand out for you? Honestly, the one thing that I thought was it was a fair it was a fair documentary. I'm anxious to get your input on that. I thought overall it was a good interview. And I I I didn't like the fact that they opened up with Lori's family. They, to me, they have no value. And they added no value. But I'm not in control of that. And that's part of, of, of trying to get past the anger that, that I have. And, um, you know, everybody's going to eventually have to come to grips with this. And you would think after four years that we, we have come to grips, but we haven't, John, not totally. Yeah, uh, I really appreciate your honesty because... I, from my perspective, you've been an amazing ambassador for the families and the victims, and you've been a real peacekeeper in many ways. You know, I, I always remember the moment after the bodies were found and you went over to Chad's home and you made a statement to the media, and I, I can't imagine you, sh- you showed such composure. It hurt, John. It really hurt. Yeah. But, you know, you, it, it's not about me. This has never been about Kay and I. This has always been this has always been about the kids. The first time I was on on and being interviewed, where are the kids? Where are the children? We're the children. And now it's not only where is JJ, where is Tylee, where are all the missing kids? Why do people who are so able to see and watch and follow these stories, I swear, it seems like it's daily, weekly, monthly now. For what? If you don't want your children, turn turn them over to your relatives. Turn them over to your friends. Turn them over to people who want and love children and want to see the best for them. That's all I've ever wanted. I just wanted J.J. We had no idea what had happened to those children. Y'all know that. Everybody knows that. And, and and all we ever wanted was, we just wanted JJ. And we just wanted Tylee back. Yeah. I My home was open to, to all of them. And it, it's... It's so uncalled for. I hope that if there's anything in America that happens, not just because of our situation, that America will start seeing when you've got relatives, friends that are having issues and there's children involved, ask for help. Just ask for help. And, and, I mean, I can't fix everybody's problem. God, if I only, if I could, I would do it and never even, I'd do it to my last breath. But let's stop killing. Let's stop raping. Let's stop sex trafficking children. It's got to end. At some point, our representatives that we elect, that we pay outrageous money to, that we pay the benefits and and the everything that goes with this, at what point are they going to say enough is enough is enough? 
There's got to be a way, John. There's got to be a way, Lauren, that somebody has to stand, stand up and say, no, we're not going to do this to children. I'm sorry. I, I just, it's so senseless. I have a question for Larry and John, my husband, John. Larry, you mentioned that um, in your healing process, you won't ever be able to forgive the circle of friends. And I understand that. I will. Um, yeah, I understand. And I think sometimes there are sometimes people that come up on our channel. And this is my question for John, that they say forgiveness is part of healing. But I don't know if that's necessarily true. And I was wondering if maybe, John, you could talk about that or Larry, too, because I think it just depends on where we are and the person. Um, I, I mean, I'll let Larry speak to this in a minute, but I, I, I think everybody has a different approach. And what works for someone won't work for someone else, right? And so... I think grieving is, to me, grieving is a very individual, idiosyncratic process. And so when you, when, when I hear, you know, in our, in our field, sometimes people talk about the stages of grief or the way grief should be, at, you know, how we should find closure. And my response to that is, I don't know if any of that's true. I don't think there's stages. I think it depends on the person and their experience and the, whether they forgive or not, that's entirely up to them. Totally what, agree. Yeah. Whether someone can find closure, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if there's such thing as complete closure. I don't, I don't believe there is. I am trying so hard for closure. I cannot forgive them. I can't. I'm sorry. You don't kill. You don't murder. You can't be involved in the attempted murder. And that circle, not one of them ever said, enough is enough. This is going to end. This is not what the Lord intended. This is not how human beings allow this to happen. That is senseless. No, that circle will always, I will never respect them. I will never accept them. And I never will forgive them because all it would have taken is one person to say enough is enough is enough. This is crazy. You see something, you, how many thousands of times have officials been on TV, you see something, say something. At some point, the public has to see priorities. Children are our priorities. And at my age, they're what counts. My grandchildren, my life's about my grandchildren. My life is about banks. My life, my life is about so many amazing children. Laura, Laura's girls, they're my girls now. Gigi's girls. I'm Papa, and I want them to know they have more than two Papas. My phone is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Let's start changing what our perspective in life is about as a nation. 
whether it starts in the city, in the care, in the parish, the county, the state. Let's start changing things. You elected politicians, let's start changing things. When does this end? All of the, the, the child welfare, welfare services. When do you start doing your job like you're supposed to do it? This Man. doesn't happen to our, need to happen to our children, our grandchildren, and our great grandchildren. Stop it. Stop it. Thank you, Larry. Um, and thank you for bringing up the circle of friends and that there were other, that there were people that could have said something. And many of these people will be witnesses at the upcoming trial. You'll be in the courtroom with them in front of Chad Daybell. And I think, and I hope that you can find strength during those times, knowing what you said. And I hope, I hope that they hear you. I, I do too. You know, not one of them, not one of them. Not one, one person in that circle has ever reached out to our family. Not wow. one of them. All right, I'm living with the results of that. Guess what group? Y'all are gonna live with it now because the, the onus is on you. And I hope that you can't live with it knowing that two children died, knowing that people died. And you could have simply said at any time, quit, I'm out of this. I don't care what your religious belief is. Or if there's no religious belief, stop killing our kids. Stop abusing our kids. Stop selling our kids. Enough is enough. Larry is referring to answer this question. Who are the circle of friends? Larry is referring to those that believed Chad and Lori and had these same like-minded beliefs and were part of their, their friend circle while the children were alive and, and when the murders happened, that's who he's referring to many people that could have said something and Absolutely. they chose not to. Yeah. Even including during the investigation, it took all of them a very long time to come forward. Yeah. All of them, um, I, and I, I don't understand. I don't understand Lori and Chad to begin with. I don't think anybody on earth. I don't think. I don't even know Jock, if Doctor John, the smartest man I know, in psycho as a psychiatrist, as everything that this brilliant man does, and I am not blowing smoke up his ass. I am telling you right now. Thanks, Larry. How does anybody look in the mirror day in and every morning, every night and say, no, this was wrong and, and, and live with themselves. And I, 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 I don't understand it, John. I don't. And Lauren, how you do what you do, baby. I still, Y'all are, y'all are amazing. I, I mean, this show is amazing. And I'm not saying that because I'm sitting here and not because y'all are two of our closest friends. I'm saying it because it is the truth. And it's time for the truth to start getting out. Stop the kids from being used, sold, and murdered. It's got to stop. Thank you. It does. And that is why we continue Hidden True Crime and why we'll be, we will be covering this trial, Larry, the upcoming trial, Chad Daybell's trial. Lori's is over, but Chad Daybell's trial is coming up in just a few weeks and we will cover this thing beginning to end. I'm going to be out there with y'all. I know exactly where you're staying and I'll be over there and you know where I'm, you know, I'm staying and, uh, and we're going to see this through and John's going to even try to venture it to Boise as well. Hey, and John. <laughs> yep. Thank y'all so much. I, I don't know how long y'all want to talk. I'll get off my, 
my mad box right now. And I mean, we can have happy conversations, but I want to thank y'all from the bottom of my heart for everything y'all do and supporting the victims, supporting, just listen, just listen to John, y'all. Listen to what he has to say. Listen to him. And if it's not John, find you a, a great counselor. Get help. My God, what would have changed in life in the last four years if Laurie and, and Chad had just got help? Yeah. It's so easy to ask for. And, and even the circle. Get help. It's too late now. I can't get JJ back. I can't get Tylee back. But you know what? You circle, y'all tried to make things better for yourself and for others. And come to the realization you are stupid. Yeah. I'm coming down. I, I, really, I like that adjective, by the way. Just call it as it is. Stupid. I, the only thing I can do, baby. Stupid. Uh, you know me. <laughs> call it as it is. So stupid. It was like they were, it was like Comic Con stupidity that hurt people. What were y'all um, thinking? And I like Comic Con, but Comic Con oh, is, 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 <laughs> it, it is fiction. You know, that's the point. Role playing games. Our fiction. Um, yeah. No, this is a safe space, Larry, for for anger, for laughter, for it is. joking. It's a safe space for everything. So you can be whoever you are at the time when you show up. This is a safe yeah. space for, well, for everyone. Well, y'all pretty well know by now. You What you see is what you get. <laughs> yeah. uh, I thought you and Kay did an incredible job in that documentary. Oh, um, Kay was amazing. Oh, my God. She was amazing. She was. She wasn't. She, she looked did. beautiful. She told me she didn't like how she looked. But Kay, if you're listening, you were beautiful. She's, you're beautiful, Kay. She is uh. such a beautiful woman inside and out. Um, I, I wish more people could get to meet her and and see the, who she is, how loving she is. And I mean, she's an amazing person, just like y'all. I can't imagine having two better friends. It's just, y'all are both amazing. Y'all really are. Yeah. For and those that are just joining, oh, go ahead, John. No, no. no, no. Well, I, I just want to say, I, I, I feel like I need to compliment Larry and Kay as well. I mean, you guys have just been tireless advocates for justice and for children. And for, as you said, it's become about now all the missing kids, not you're missing kids, but Absolutely. all the missing kids. And I, I can't think of anyone who's done a better job and had a stronger voice than, than you guys, Larry. And, and for that, I'm really grateful because as you know, a big part of our show and our mission is to advocate for kids. Yeah, it is John. And that's the reason, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you know, y'all have got such a great show and, and it's so informative. The education that I get out of this is amazing. I mean, I've never been involved in psychology and especially in, in the, the, the way that, that you do it and the experience that y'all, that you have and the experience Lauren's got and you merge those two together and I don't know why you don't have a five o'clock talk show nationwide every day. I mean, I, I'm, I just. You're the best, on, Larry. The <laughs> universe out there, the two best people on the, on, on the, on the, in this situation. Do something. Get off y'all's ass. <laughs> We need to invite you. We need to invite you on our show every night. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Right. I, if if we 
if we did have a talk show, Larry, and I think we're a long way from that, but if we did, you're going to be our first guest. In fact, I think we'll have you on. We'll have you on all week. If our, if I we... don't think you, your audience could stand that all week. <laughs> it, it wouldn't take long. Yeah, sure. To the the French started coming out. And you think I'm opinionated <laughs> now? You wait until that comes out. You talk about call them as as I see them. I call them as I see them, huh, John? <laughs> For sure. But I, I'm not worried about it. We'll yeah. yeah we'll and figure I love it out. my wearing my camouflage shirts for y'all. Your camouflage shirt is very camouflaged. I can't yeah, see the you. shirt. I can hardly see you. It's so camouflaged. <laughs> for, those, for those just joining us because we've uh, doubled our, our viewers live since we started, we're talking with Larry Woodcock. He is the grandfather, the papa of victim JJ Vallow when it comes to the Lori Vallow and Chad Dable case. And he was just part of the uh, crime nation episode as were, as were we, uh, that aired on Tuesday called Fatal Devotion. And that is what we're talking about. And you can still stream that for free on the CW app. You can stream it for free if you just download the app. John and Lauren, what? I want y'all to give me 10 seconds. My phone is ringing and I got to go turn it off so y'all can talk yep. about it while I'm gone. Good. We'll talk about you. You're put I'll I'll mute I'll mute him so the earth so that he can't hear us. Okay, he's gone. No. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, so for those, you know, what we want to talk about too when Larry gets back is the behind the films, uh, behind the scenes filming as well, because we were all in Las Vegas together during filming and we wanted to share about that. Uh, they flew Larry and Kay out and they uh, did Las Vegas and we were here. And so they, shot all of our video or all of our interviews at the same place. Larry here, I'll catch you up. Hey. Um, we had an awesome session with you gone. No, just kidding. We were talking about the behind the scenes filming and how they, you, they flew you out to Las Vegas and they got an Airbnb or a home to film. And all of three of us, including K four of us, uh, we, we were filmed at the same location, although all different days, which sort of put yeah. a damp on our vacation because we wanted to get together a lot more. But I was filming one day, and then John was filming one day, and then you, and then Kay. But I was sort of surprised to see you and Kay in separate scenes, too. Did they film you together on the same both. couch? They do separate, both. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering that. Yeah. I was wondering yeah. that. Uh, th the film crew was amazing. And... Uh, I, you know, as everything in life, I, I wish we had a a redo. <laughs> There's a yeah. couple of things that I that I'd love to have expressed differently, mm -hmm. a little bit more poignant. And Fair enough. <laughs> imagine that. But uh, I thought that CW did a great job. I was a little bit hesitant. I didn't know exactly because we absolutely knew nothing. Right. Uh, it's a new pie. It's a new series too. It's a it new is. series. We don't it know, is. you know, fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I am, I was very pleased with it. And honestly, I, Lauren, you know, yourself, we really haven't be, been betrayed anything other than ourselves you included, Dr. John, you in, included in that. And, but there's, there's always something we wish, we wish we could, we could change. Yeah, always. Well, I, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the viewers a little secret. I didn't know if I was going to let the secret out, but you know what, John, I'm telling on you. I'm telling on Dr. John. He has not yet watched it, but he hasn't but let me explain why he hasn't watched it because he just can't stand watching himself on TV. He does not watch our lives. Once we finish ever again, I do all the editing and I, I have to put my earphones in cause he refuses to listen to his voice. <laughs> He's not watched the dateline that he was in. Um, I barely got him to watch the Netflix doc. Um, I, and, but he is not, watch this because it's just so hard for him to be on camera but i've told him a lot about it and i wanted to show him one clip that i promised him he's not a part of uh but that crime nation sent me that i was allowed to share here so sorry john to out you 
<laughs> yeah, no, that that's okay. I think um, I've talked about Get this over before. it, John. You're a grown <laughs> man. Get off your ass. Come on. <laughs> Get in the game. Put your helmet on. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess... I was do this, right. I guess if we ever got a, a show, Larry, I would have to, no matter what, I'd have to watch it. But, that's right. Um, you do. I think for me, I don't, you know, just quickly on this issue, um, when I do a report, a court report or an evaluation, I put my heart in it and it's, it's, it's so, it takes so much focus and energy um, that oftentimes I just want to complete it and put it away and not think about it. And it's sort of like that with these documentaries, you know, I spent seven hours with the film crew and I tried to focus on every question. And I just, when I finish that, I just want to walk away from it. I don't want to go revisit it. I don't want to critique myself, right? Like it's, oh, I have to critique myself. Yeah, right. I, no, uh-uh, son. Yeah. <laughs> and that's hard though, right? It is. It's hard. And you know what I've come to, to believe in myself, John? Just be yourself. Just be who you are. I'm not going to try to be a New York, whatever, a coochie coo. I'm not going to be West Coast flower. I'm a Cajun from South Louisiana. I'm vocal. I'm opinionated. And I'm going to be that. And, and you know, you think I haven't had my tail whipped in my life? But I can tell you, I've whipped a lot more than I've had it whipped. And <laughs> me and you playing our, our sports, we understand that. And that's part yeah. of life, John. I agree. You're you're opinionated? No, you're outspoken? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Do yeah. I know hey, you? I'm just but kidding. Lauren, am I not very subdued in court? I, I've only had to go before the judge one time. You're very respectful. I am. I respect the court. I respect the, the, the law enforcement. That's, I'll give my life up for any of them, anytime. They're in trouble on the side of the road. I'll be the first one to pull in. I've always done that. My yeah. dad taught me that. And, and I think it's important. And, and so I want to, but man, sometimes my mouth gets me in trouble. <laughs> me too. John's a little bit better. John thinks before he speaks and I don't always. So. Oh, I, I try to, but my mouth just don't, don't let it happen. Hey, somebody's <laughs> knocking at my door. Y'all go ahead and talk about me for one minute. Okay. I'll, I'll play this and ask John about it. John, why don't I play this? Um, okay. And we'll uh, I'll mute him just in case he answers that door. And I'll make this smaller so we can see. Well, I'll just remove him for a second. I can watch him backstage. So I'll see when he comes back. Here's what I wanted to show you. This is a clip that Crime Nation sent us. And uh, I want to show you and I want to ask your thoughts about this. Oh, and here he is. Hey, Larry, I see you. I'll have you back in just a second. Watch this with us, okay? There's a big room and she had it lined, the walls lined with mirrors. And he said every night she gets in there and she dances for two to three hours. Charles tried to embrace her sort of extreme beliefs as much as he could without understanding them. He tried to be welcoming to her new friends, but it got weirder and weirder, stranger and stranger. Charles called me one day. He said she dances and she records herself and she's sending it to some guy named Chad Daybell. And I said, well, who is he? And he said, well, he's in that crazy religion stuff she's doing. I told Charles, if they're not having an affair, they're getting ready to. I can tell you that much. Larry, are you okay for a little bit longer? Or did you need to go? Oh, no. I, look, this is on your dime. 
I can stay here all night talking to y'all. The only thing that's missing is Mr. Banks. Yeah. He's at school, yeah. luckily, or else we wouldn't be able to do this live. <laughs> <laughs> you can miss him right now. I think we're kind of relieved. Uh, I understand. I understand. Yeah. But, but uh, I wanted to bring this up, this dancing uh, video. Yeah, Aaron is saying the dancing is freaky. That's not religious. She was being seductive. Nitty Gritty is saying, oh, MG, I've never heard about these two to three hour nightly dancing sessions before. So yeah. creepy. John and I didn't know about him. John has actually talked about these dancing sessions before we did a full Patreon episode. We do uh, Patreon episodes, um, the bonus episodes on patreon.com slash hidden to crime. And he talked about the dancing, but John, I wanted to, I was wondering if you could share a bit of your thoughts on the dancing here with us. Uh, and, and by the way, Larry, I've, I've asked Kay, I'm like, tell me you have these dancing videos. Come on. Just, I know you've got them. She's, she's told me she hasn't, she doesn't have them guys. She doesn't have them. But <laughs> John thoughts. Well, I, I, I agree with Kay. I think they're flirtatious and seductive. And I think she's trying to entice Chad Daybell to enter in a relationship. Actually. Well, I'm trying to think at that point, at that point they were together right yeah so they were together they were together and charles discovered the video right. so charles so charles vallo discovered the dancing videos uh that lori was sending to chad dancing with something lori always liked to do we've even heard from some some jail mates that she would dance in jail so it sounds like something she still wants to do but in this situation she was not only having these dance sessions she was uh, recording herself and sending these videos to Chad Daybell, who's on trial next month. And then uh, Charles discovered the dancing videos being sent to Chad Daybell and told Kay about them. And Kay saw some of the videos. Um, everybody wants to see the dancing videos. I hope if we ever find them, that you let us, you let us de <laughs> debut them. That you give us, you give us that breaking news. <laughs> uh, I, I've never, I, I don't, I, other than a snippet that we've seen on, uh, on the shows, I have never seen them, but I, it, I can tell you right now, it's not dance videos. It's sexation to Chad. That's, that's a great word. Uh, we're going to coin that word. Yes. Go ahead. You can have it, baby. John, you compared this to somebody. I'm getting a lot of comments and opinions, but you you compared Lori's dancing to a scene in a movie. Do you remember that? You're going to have to refresh my memory. The My only thought in, in seeing that is that I, I think she may have missed her true calling. Maybe she should have been living in Vegas, not far from us. I don't know. Well, not... I. I don't want her living close to us, but if it could have prevented this whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. Then, you know, she should have come to Vegas. That seems like more of her calling. This is what you compared it to John. Well, it was actually a, a hidden gem uh, that actually brought this up and we watched it, but she, <sighs> she pictured the Joker. Does that refresh your memory? That was, so that was dancing in, in jail. But that's what I mean. She would dance. Right. That was dancing. But there's, in jail. There's, a, there's a distinction between. So I think the dancing that they referenced in the, in the show is a little different than the dancing in jail, the dancing. in so the Joker, the Joker moment in the movie with the one with uh, Joaquin Phoenix is that he commits his first murder. And then he, he finds this bathroom and he gets into this kind of ecstatic state where he dances. And so, so, but I think that's a little different. So I, that's what she was doing in jail. She continued. So people should know she continued the dancing in jail, which to me was more like the Joker moment, almost this, for almost the celebration of what they had accomplished, which makes it even more disgusting and sicker. Right. But it, so the, but the, the moment, the dancing moment from the show you're talking about, I think was more purely provocative and okay. and sexual yeah. as Larry I, points out. I've always thought, and I've always, and I've said it many times. 
I thought that was it. It was her escape from reality that mm -hmm. she was placing herself in a another time zone, or I, 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 she was lose. She was out of the reality of the day and what life was. Am I wrong, John? Or is that? Yeah, no, I I agree. I think there's a there's a dissociative component, meaning that. She's not oriented in, in reality. She's, yeah. I think there's definitely with her dancing in general, both the, the ones that she sent to Chad and the ones in the jail, I think there's this element of being dissociated from reality. And I, yeah, and I think yeah. that's, that's always been a big question with her is, you know, how much is she oriented to, in, you know, to reality and to the world? How much does she understand? How delusional is she? How paranoid, right? All those those questions always crop up with Lori. Yeah. Well, it's always been my thought that she was trying to escape to something else, to you know, to be a, be away from the reality of the day, and it, and it, I mean, I'm, I just believe what I believe. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's that is about the best I can put it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing that John and I, uh, before this came out, that we would joke about is uh, John told me that during his interview, which I wasn't a part of, that they kept pushing him to reword things, uh, be, as in dumb it down. Can you can you say it in more simplistic terms? <laughs> Imagine and one that. Of them, <laughs> and one of them was one of them was the pendulum about the pendulum, Chad Daybell's pendulum. And John, you know, at one point they got like the boss on the phone with John, like the head of the production company on the phone with him to say, can you know, tell me about the pendulum? And I guess John didn't give him what's so funny is we thought the pendulum would be a huge talking point for John because of the way they pushed him. John, I watched it. They didn't have you say a single thing about the pendulum. They had the other reporter from from Arizona, that incredible reporter from uh, Arizona, talk about the pendulum because I think in the end they finally gave up with you, John, and they just well, couldn't get out. <laughs> John, let, let me leave you yeah. alone. Let me tell the pendulum story. So, the you know I I'd, I'd been interviewing for, for first of all on the dummy down point. They, in fairness, they never use that term. That would be that would be my interpretation. They never she would the person that was interviewing me, which she would stop and say, she would think about my answer and she would say, can you say that a different way? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd be so, like me, them asking me to say it a different way. No. <laughs> okay. And I, I'm like, I just spent five minutes giving my, what I thought was the perfect answer. Now you want me to say it a different way. So my translation is she wanted me to totally dummy it down, but so then I I would try to, but yeah. but you know I don't I don't know what they used in the end, but the yeah. the pendulum <laughs> the oh. pendulum story oh, yeah. is I'd been I'd been there for like four hours and all of a sudden this voice comes out of nowhere like from the wall and I I I don't I'm looking around I can't I can't see anyone I'm thinking where what is going on and it's it's from a speaker and so they all they all let me know, Oh, that's the, you know, that's the big boss. That's the guy who owns all this. Right. He, he wants oh. to, he wants to ask a few questions. So, so of course I had to take that seriously. And, uh, he, his first, he, this first question was about the pendulum and he said something to the effect of, don't you think that the pendulum, do you know about the pendulum? I said, yeah, of course, you know, most people, Lauren and I talk about the pendulum all the time because it's the owl, AKA owl necklace that Chad found in a church. <laughs> I'm sure some 11 year old lost it and he picked it up, said it was his and that it was magical. That's what we're talking yeah, about here. Yeah. Some people think Chad's pendulum sounds weird. We're not talking about the storm. We're talking about the pendulum. So the pendulum. Okay. <laughs> exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Okay. Go right. Ahead. So it's, it's, it's like this $5 pendulum that you could get from, um, um, Claire's. Claire's or what there's another place in the mall that sells like cheap jewelry. Yeah. What's the name of that thing? Anyway. I don't know. One of those um, places. 
Yeah, one of those places. It's like this little forever piece of costume. Forever jewelry. 21, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that that he but he attributes magical properties to this pe- owl pendulum. And so the the he's on the speaker and he says he's kind of trying to he's asking leading questions. He's trying to, you know, get me to say something and he says, "Well, don't you think this is a little bit of a parlor trick?" And that was his, you know, do you think this is a parlor trick? And I mean, yeah. I mean, yes and no. You know, my problem with that question was it, what his implication is that ta- that Chad is a a total con man who's just making all of this up, right? But you don't you don't go to the extremes they went to if you're just making it all up. Mm-hmm. So in other words, it is it a parlor trick? Yeah, maybe to some degree, but like he really believes it too. So he's he really seriously believes that that little pendulum has magical properties, right? And so like, but it's a hard question to answer because a parlor trick is performed by someone who knows it's fake. Someone who, someone who's right, trying to con people typically. And Chad isn't quite that, right? It's, it's complicated. So I, I gave an answer the way I'm kind of answering here. Like, well, Yes and no. Yeah, there's some parlor trick there. He, yes, he's a bit of a con man, but he really believes it. They should have asked you, Larry. They should have asked you. <laughs> well, first, In other the words. first thing I'd say, if anybody believes Ch- uh, Chad is is a con man, he's a con. There the you man go. part. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the man part. Yeah, but but he did. That, yeah, he I, he did believe you, you'd have. To, I would argue that he believed in the New Jerusalem, and he his belief system was something that was real to him. He also believed in a very large storm, but I want to say it was just a little itty, itty bitty storm. And no, I agree. He's no man. He's a nothing burger. Will. I think I think Lauren well, just goes um, with that whole circle. Yeah, exactly. He goes with the whole circle. Absolutely. He goes with the whole circle. He's just he's a he's a. I I just figured out that if you wrote a book on this case, Lauren, I I think you're you would title it "The Storm and the Pendulum." The itty 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 bitty storm. <laughs> and the cheap pendulum. Oh yeah, you go, John. You own it now. <laughs> the teeny weeny pendulum. No, the teeny weeny <laughs> storm and the, uh, and the cheap lost pendulum. Uh, let's, All let's, right. Okay. Let's so, but, but the okay. the pendulum after the the you know after the question from the boss about the pendulum, I knew knew that pendulum was going to find its way into the show. It did. It did. Just not with you though. They were like, we're yeah, done with, with him. They're yeah. done. They were done with you. He tra- After about 30 minutes of trying to get the pendulum answer from me, I guess he wasn't satisfied <laughs> with, with my, uh, my answer that wasn't dumbing down, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, John, anyway, the next time that comes up. So, you know what? I got the perfect person. Let me call him. He can answer that. Yeah. <laughs> let's get him on speakerphone here. Let's get him on speakerphone. Yes. I should and have done that. let's go live while he's saying that, what he's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, it was a little frustrating because I, he was pushing that pendulum really hard. And uh, I just fundamentally, I guess, didn't agree with I, I didn't think it was just a parlor trick. No. Thus, you didn't give them the answer they were looking for. Yeah. Um. I just, you know, Larry, we're so appreciative of you coming today. Is there anything else that you want to say today? Um, I, I, you know, first of all, thank y'all as always. We miss y'all, and I miss my little buddy. And uh, you know, I, and I think the only thing I can end with is what I have said very vocally in this interview is 
it's got to, it, it, it's not about me anymore. It's not about Kay. It's not about our family anymore. Now we got to get beyond this. And we need to do what I, I think I said, which I think is right. Let's not let this happen to anybody else. I, I think it's time, as I said, for people to stop realizing this has to end. It's getting too prevalent. It's, I, I, I just don't understand it. If there's a problem, seek help. There's too many great minds out there, doctors out there, Dr. John, seek help, get help. Let's don't do this anymore. It's got to stop. The, this whole landscape geography that we're looking at now across this country and across the world. Come on, people. We're older. We're the adults. Quit this. How does a predator get up in the morning and look at themselves in a mirror and said and think or says, I'm going to hurt a child today. I'm going to hurt a child. I'm going to run a child's life. I'm going to kill a child today. Look. If that's what you're thinking, and John, I know you're not going to like what I have to say. Suck a gun barrel, blow your brains out. Don't do it to the children. Get help. And that way you don't have to do to make the, the ultimate sacrifice. Get help. Ask for help. Beg for help. Get on your knees and pray to the Lord. Get help. Let's don't have this. Our children don't deserve this. Come on, guys. Come on, friends. Come on, relatives. Come on, world. This is not right. It's got to change. Something has got to change. And John and Lauren, thank you so much again. Thank you so much. Thank you. We appreciate you, Larry. Thank you so much for being here with yeah, us today. You, and, and we will I, let you go. We're going to keep can't talking think of a little more, bit longer. I can't go think ahead, of a more compelling message, and I can't say it better than you, Larry. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And thanks, everybody, for listening to this old man just kind of rant and rave. <laughs> and uh, hug your children. And John, Lauren, give Banks a hug for me. You know my little man. I love him. Yes. And, and everybody, all my friends, all of our acquaintances, all of our television friends, everybody that's on this, hug your children tight. Hug your grandchildren. Hug your grand, great-grandchildren. Tell them you love them. Protect them. Be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for them. No hesitation. I would do it, and I'll preach that as long as I can. Let's love our children, and let's hold them for the precious things they are. Thank you, John. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. You have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in just a few weeks in Idaho. Absolutely, baby. Yeah. Love y'all. We'll all right, Love we'll you see too. you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Before we go, I just wanted uh, us maybe to share a little bit about the upcoming week before we take off. Um, but I wanted to let Larry take off so you didn't have to listen to all the other things we have going on. Thank you so much, Edamame. Thank you. But uh, John and I, what are we doing this weekend, John? First off, what what are we, what are we doing this hidden hour? We will be talking about the Rust trial 
And there was a verdict yesterday. The verdict was guilty of involuntary manslaughter for Hannah Gutierrez Reed. She was the defendant and the verdict just came down and we'll be talking about that because it's, it, it differs a little bit from uh, the typical cases that we talk about. Usually the cases we talk about involve some degree of premeditation and this doesn't. And so um, I do, I do get involved in cases by the way, where uh, murders are more impulsive rather than premeditated, but this, this isn't even that. This is something else. So uh, I think it, it's a, it's an interesting situation, and it gives us a chance to really think about a crime that's a bit different and involves involuntary manslaughter, and it raises a lot of interesting questions for me, like who's to blame? That's the central issue. So we'll be talking about that issue of who's to blame in this type of situation, and that's what we'll be discussing Saturday night. Yeah. And it will be interesting. Alec Baldwin will also be going to trial later this year uh, when it comes to this film rust and the loss of, of Helena Hutchins. Um, it just completely unnecessary killing of an, of an innocent person and a mother. And so we want to continue following this case uh, for those that don't know, we now have a trial. Uh, uh, we have a sister channel. It's called Hidden True Crime Trials. You can find the link in the description of this video. And we will be, uh, we just finished uh, streaming the Rust trial there. And we will continue to be uh, streaming mini trials there as well. Today is day one I want to share of uh, the James Crumbly trial. Uh, Ethan Crumbly was a uh, someone that was a school shooter and James is his dad. And that's just beginning today on our trial. And we also want to be able to talk about that as well. So many of the trials we start streaming on our Hidden True Crime trial, we will um, be discussing here at Hidden True Crime so you can go get caught up. Um, so thank you. Please hit subscribe and please hit subscribe here as well. Thank you, Rebecca. She says, between Larry's words and the crumbly trial, I've been moved to reach out to my daughter twice this afternoon, just checking in and sending love. Thank you. Uh, we have Tom here as well. Tom, a juror for the Lori Vallow trial. He says, you guys did an amazing job in that documentary and that episode, that Crime Nation episode. Thank you, Tom. We appreciate you so much. Also, um, I did just want to share a few updates with Hidden True Crime. Um, John and I are planning and covering the Daybell trial in detail. I will be in Idaho, right, John? And you might show up as well. Um, yep, I'll be joining you. One of the things that I want to mention about our trial channel too is that we will be more active, actively involved in covering some of those trials, that we will actually attend some of those trials. We will comment on some of those trials live. So we'll be more involved. Right now we're just streaming them, but we will also be participating in some of those trials, especially cases that we've followed closely and that we've covered and analyzed a lot. So yeah. So look, this, look for that. And this Crumbly trial sets a major precedent. This is the first time when it comes to this type of crime that parents have been charged. And uh, Ethan's mother was found guilty of, of manslaughter. So. So this is a very fascinating um, crime and about families and family systems. And I think it's something that really uh, is important to the hidden true crime community. And so we are watching that as well as many other crimes that you guys have suggested where we watch, we are watching them and we are following along and discussing um, and having conversations about them behind the scenes. So thank you for all those that encourage us to follow certain trials. Um, so it's asking, let's see, did we read about all of the motions? Yes, we've been reading about it. There is a lot of motions, uh, sealed, sealed things going on in the Daybell trial. We are following that as well. Also, I wanted to share that we are so close to 144,000 subscribers. Um, and you know, Lori and Chad, uh, wanted their 144 followers. I think they got about five, four, five of them. 
-hmm. and clearly they didn't have the right idea. So we are, we are now collecting um, a good group of beautiful hidden gems, uh, 144,000 and uh, not for the end of the world, but to support victims and survivors and to uh, learn and understand uh, bits of ourselves as we follow true crime. So thank you to those who subscribe. And uh, John, is that Bellagio pool party uh, still going on or do you have regrets? <laughs> I, th um, I think we're going to have to revive it. I think it's been, the party's been laying dormant and we, you know, we don't, we haven't been growing that quickly. So I, I thought we might, reached 144,000, but we just keep growing drip by drip and which is great because I think we're growing by word of mouth, which is the most powerful way to create a community because the people who do, do subscribe to us, uh, they seem, you know, committed and, and somewhat loyal to us and we appreciate that and they participate. So we love that, but it's, it's taken a little bit of time to get to the 144. We're not, I don't think we're quite as charismatic as Chad in our gathering. So it's taken time, but, but I Maybe do, I do, a pendulum. Wanna... I do, I do have an owl pendulum, a wonderful hidden gem sent me. She had an owl pendulum and I have it. I wish I had it right here, but maybe that's what we need to do. A parlor trick, swing it back and forth. Just kidding. I'll, I never would. Don't worry. Well, you can, you can wear it to the party. So, but the, the, you can, that can be your, necklace for the party so at the, at the pool party being a swimsuit yeah. and an owl pendulum yeah for I sure you got it you I gotta have the owl pendulum especially because we've talked about it but um so i i think i'm i'm open to revive you know reviving the party and bringing it back to life and maybe we can do it this summer and if we can get to the 144 i mean we we've got to crack the 144 so i don't know before the end of Chad's trial. I mean, come on. Like they got to five. I, Let's show them what a real 144 looks like. A real, a real so the, powerful. I'm already thinking about names like the, maybe the, I thought maybe the hidden apocalypse party. How about that? I don't, maybe our, the hidden apocalypse, hidden apocalypse because there's really no apocalypse. It's hidden. You won't the see un, it. The un apocalypse party. The un the, maybe it's the the unapocalyptic party. I don't know. Our our gems. I, this I is just our, the beginning party. This is just the beginning. I want to put our gems to work thinking about a name for this party. But my my initial attempt here is the hidden apocalypse party. So, but, but yeah, I think we, we can think about maybe the celebrating, celebrating our, uh, the, the call um, yeah, we'll entertain a lot of names, but we will, we want to have some type of celebration for our community and our show and mostly for our community and, and just celebrate um, you know, just celebrate our community essentially and, and reaching, you know, a milestone that we never thought we would reach, which would be 144,000. So, uh, yes, the apot luckus of the apot. <laughs> our gems are amazing. <laughs> We're going to have the apot luckus party 2024. Um, do you think that Bellagio would let us just have a potluck in their pool? Just be like, hey guys, bring the funeral potatoes this way. We need we need the tuna casserole over here. <laughs> I don't think they would let Bellagio. us do that. I don't. You said in the pool. I don't think they would let us do it in the pool. Maybe to the side. Just have a. I don't potluck. think they're gonna allow like funeral potatoes floating in the pool. But yeah, baked maybe beans on this side. We got the baked beans and the burgers. Maybe have you on the grill in the Bellagio pool. Uh, not in it, but I mean, I mean, you know. The, I think they'll let call? us use, maybe they'll let us use the deck, but we probably need to cater it. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we have to think about it, but anyway, we're, we're, we're reviving this idea and, you know, let's, let's see if, um, I'm dead. You guys are coming up with these amazing ideas. We need a flash mob party in the Bellagio pool. <laughs> yeah, that too. So, um, green jello. Yeah. So, uh, I think we would we would do obviously we'd be there we'd do some type of meet and greet right we would do 
uh, maybe we would do a show. I think maybe we do a live show from a room at the Bellagio and you guys, we'd welcome everyone to attend. I don't, we're, we're going to have to start planning a little bit. I think if we're going to do this, but let's see what our interest is. And I am dying at all the jokes. Someone said you can bail us out of jail after someone else says, uh, there's no way the Bellagio would probably allow us to bring our baked beans in. Uh, but then someone said, well, we could just portal them. And then <laughs> hopefully yeah. it won't storm. If it does, it'll be just a drizzle. Um, we'll have... Yeah, yeah that's Don't a good point. Don't forget the Jolly Ranchers for lipstick. I'm sure it lasts while well in the pool. Um, John, I think you should be in a swimsuit and the, the owl pendulum, not me, by the way. I think I'm going to give that outfit to you. <laughs> that would be... <laughs> That would be totally Vegas, a swimsuit with just a pendulum, you know? Yeah, like, the world's largest end time podcast, LARPing gathering, world book of records. We could have, we could feature dark and stormy drinks. We'll have the Lori Vallow fruit salad joke, maybe bad joke, but we'll, de- and, but we'll have the Lori Vallow, now the Kay Woodcock funeral, or not funeral potatoes, potato salad. Um, Mix Bunky. We'll be doing synchronized swimming routines. Do you hear that, McSpunky? If you're not here, <laughs> McSpunky has McSpunky has to be there for sure. So, portal the pasta. Bring your ukulele, you guys. <laughs> I... Right. That means that. Well, can we get the what kind of? Uh, they were wearing like Hawaiian lays too, right? Like white. Were they white? We need those. Yeah, white lace and a ukulele. You have the ring, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. John, our wedding ring, unfortunately, resembles yeah, Lori Vallow's. Was... We're sorry. The first time Kay Woodcock saw that, she thought it was a joke. It is not Malachite. It is turquoise, no. and we had it first. Yeah, we... Although we eloped. We eloped, and on our wedding certificate, Alex Cox is our witness. That's real. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. The, but this, yeah, this ring was 2016. So, so we beat, no, 2015. So we, we beat, we, we were way ahead of them. We were way ahead of them. Well, Kathy is saying, I have an owl necklace with CTR in the middle of it. Can I bring it? And then she says, it's actually my favorite necklace, but you kind of ruined it for me. It's, it's not evil. No, I know it kind of ruined our beautiful wedding ring for us when we saw it matched the Amazon wedding ring. So it's okay. You, you just move on. You realize you're a good person. And it has nothing to do with it, you know. We love we love our wedding ring still. We bought it in uh, near where we eloped. But it is true. Then we we got a photographer who happened to be our witness, and his name just happened to be Alex Cox too. So there's some strange things. And <laughs> he proposed. You proposed on February fourteenth, twenty two thousand sixteen. No, two thousand. When did you? Propose? Uh, it's, it was sixteen. 16, which Ghostbuster says is going to be the end of the world. It wasn't. We You proposed me that day, but we've always been into end times. It's not Malachite. It's a, it's a turquoise party. Everyone has to wear a cheap owl necklace. Yes. Um, we'll invite Julie Rowe. I, I will absolutely invite her. We'll have some. Julie Rowe, Julie Rowe can be our keynote speaker. Yes. And Carolyn. She can remind us. She can remind us of all the earthquakes and foreign invasions that are coming our way. So during the party, hopefully not during the party, but. Um. So Carolyn is saying, "Wait, your witness's name was Alex Cox for real? Pictures or it didn't happen? We've actually shown it, but you know what? I actually think I have our what I have a copy of our wedding certificate right here. So you keep you keep going on these ideas." Be right back, BRB. Pictures or it didn't happen. Watch this. Hold on. Let's see. I'm back. Any other good comments you see? You see in John? Um, I I have a more difficult time with the comments, but yeah. Oh, okay. I don't. It's a good excuse. I have it. Oh no, I don't. Sorry, but I have shown. I have shown it. Um. I have shown our wedding certificate uh, before on here, but I, I will you can, pick it didn't happen. You... I take your challenge, Carolyn. I'll, I'll post it later today. 
Why don't you post that? Yeah. Why don't you post that on Facebook or something? Yes. Yes. Um, what else? I feel like there's so much to talk about. Um, so anyway, yeah. And so the hundred, first 144, you guys will all know you were the original 144 because of course we hope to get to 200,000 and beyond, but the original 144, you'll know who you are. And we absolutely want to have an a pot luckus. I can't say it. Um, the, the, the original, the original 144 will always have a special place in our heart. Yes. Yes. In our, and, and in our pendulums. <laughs> if we get little owl, owl, what are they called? Trinket pendulums? I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, oh, there's McSpunky. McSpunky, did you hear that you're doing synchronized swimming? Um, oh, McSpunky, even better. He's bringing all the food, the food storage. He's bringing the food storage. <laughs> well, uh, I... I don't know. Now it sounds like it's not going to be very appetizing. Like you're going to have a lot of like rice. What what are we going to be eating? Guys, for don't this? worry. We'll have it catered. We'll have it catered, or we'll have Troublemaker Baker, our amazing mod Troublemaker Baker, uh, cater it. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But um, keep the ideas coming. This is too funny. This is too funny. Uh, but of course, it'll be after Chad's trial. And we just want you guys to know that we are planning on covering Chad's trial in detail. If you want to know what we're thinking right now, we plan to live stream the entire trial on Hidden True Crime. We're going to be doing a morning stream and then we're going to break and then I'm going to do a live. Just like uh, those lunch lives at Lori Vallow's trial, I'm going to be doing lunch lives. And then we'll go back to streaming in the afternoon and I'll come back out and do a live again. That's the plan right now. And then John will come on and give us his uh, thoughts every day as well. Um, oh yeah. And then stamping up, we, uh, I'm sorry. I just, I just digress, but stamping up can send out all of our invites for, <laughs> I'm sorry. Now we're like blending cases we're covering. I'm sorry. <laughs> for those that don't know about that, go watch our stamping up uh, playlist. <laughs> Let me see. You are on it today. <laughs> Yeah, somehow, somehow I feel like they might refuse that order, but I don't know. I doubt it. it you know, if if uh, if they're having any issues because of their daughter's notoriety, then they'll probably take any order thrown their way. So, so yes, I think I they probably Tim Ballard's Tim Ballard's speaking Tim Ballard speaking fees have probably gone down, so we can. Too many bad yeah, jobs. They're also, probably sorry. probably still out of our league though, but yeah. Okay. Anyway, we had too much fun here. We'll we'll get back to we'll get back to sometimes I always say if you don't laugh, you cry. And when you cover true crime, there's a time to be serious. And sometimes there's a time where you just have to have a little bit of dark humor and laugh. And I'm married to a psychologist, so um I can say, right, babe, validate me, right? I had a professor who used to say, if you can't smile at the void, then you'll never find joy. That's beautiful. Well, that's touching. If you can't smile at the void, then you'll never find joy. Thank you. And with that, I think we have the name of our party, or at least the t-shirts we're going to be handing out. We survived the non-apocalyptic non party. <laughs> that was a beautiful quote. Will you say that one more time? Thank you. Uh, it's if it was so, if if you if we can't smile at the void, then we'll never find joy. That's much more profound than my. If you don't laugh, you cry. Thank you. And you know what? Larry Woodcock's interview was heavy and I listened to every word he said and it was so important and it was profound. And I'm glad that we can also though, remember the little things of life and, and laugh together to, uh, before. We I just, to. I have to mention somebody's now riffing on uh, Jody Hildebrandt's book title, the not, not apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's go with the not the not not apocalypse party how about something like that there you go oh shelly's 
course, that's the name. I think, I think we have it. So we're going to have a not, not apocalypse party <laughs> with invites that we will be portaling, portaling made by stamping up. <laughs> Yeah. And there will the weather will be nice and shun, su, nice and sunny, and there will be no storms. So, and the photo booth will be in the distortion room. Okay, all right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for laughing with us and crying with us. This was quite the quite the midday show. Thank you so much for being the hidden gems you are, and thank you for following along. Thank you for subscribing and hitting notifications. Um, we, we are still planning trial coverage, but we also, uh, we do have a lot more, uh, involved, but those are, those are the basics. And after this is said and done, uh, we will all need a break. Um, I think many of you probably remember how heavy the Lori Vallow Daybell trial was for me and, uh, all of us. And so it is a perfect time to have a break and we'll be able to maybe get together and smile and laugh as well at our not not apocalypse with our original 144. Thank you everyone. And thank you to Larry Woodcock who who is a dear friend who came on to share and for those again uh that haven't watched the Crime Nation um episode it's called Fatal Attraction. I almost said Fatal Distortion. <laughs> fatal Attraction. Um it's uh, the latest Crime Nation episode and Brian Enton says hello as well. He was going to jump on but he is out of town. Uh, but he is also a part of this and uh, we will also be on a podcast, I think talking about it with um, Brian as well, but uh, definitely check it out. You can stream it for free on the CW app. And uh, I'm sorry to our overseas gems. I'm not sure exactly how you can see that, but all right, everyone have a, have a, have a great day and we'll see you Saturday. Is that right, John? Saturday. Yep. yep. Saturday. Right. Okay. We'll see you guys. All right. Bye. Goodbye.